tutorial for Noco HQ. And today uh, will be part two to our previous video, our free or our favorite free bubble plugins. Um, in the first video, part one, we showed um, yeah four free plugins that we really like or I really like to use in our applications. And today we're going to show the next uh, yeah four um, free bubble plugins. So let's jump right into it. We have four here collected already for you. You can see them here, um, except the Google Chrome extensions one. We have uh, lots of tutorials about this plugin uh, in other videos. Um, let's jump into the f right into the first uh, free plugin really like. Um, maybe a small disclaimer, this is developed by us here. But it's a free plugin that you can use and it's called Detect Inactivity. And it's a simple uh, plugin that detects when the user uh, has been inactive, basically. Um, inactive meaning not doing any action within your application and then you can do certain things so you could say okay so my, when my user has been inactive I want to log him out I want to show him a pop-up to remind him I want to play a sound so basically all of these things and you can basically yeah, basically have access to two events so first a user has become inactive you can do something afterwards and then it, uh, a user has become active again after being inactive so um, quite straightforward so let me just uh, demonstrate that so I'm gonna um, get the plugin here, detect, just right down to the page. Our idle time, let's make it quite short. So this is the time after when someone is um, yeah, deemed as inactive. Let's just say five sec or six seconds, okay? And let's have a pop-up here. Um, and then you can have a text maybe. Hey, you are inactive, something like this. Just for demoing purposes. Okay, and now all we uh, have to do is simply go to workflows, click here to add an event, elements, a user has become inactive. What should we do? We should, we wanna show a pop-up, pop-up A. And that's all we have to do. So basically now if we preview it, um, relatively straightforward. It's your bubble app, a user does something. It's quite, it's empty right now, so we don't see anything, but a user does something, okay, he clicks around, he does stuff. He leaves his PC maybe, he doesn't move the mouse anymore and doesn't use the keyboard. So after a few seconds, let's wait. Yeah, hey, you are inactive. Oh, okay, all right, I'm gonna close the pop-up, I'm gonna um, do stuff again, and then if he goes inactive again, we chose six seconds, which is quite a short time. Um, but yeah, the pop-up should be shown again. Yep, you are inactive. So a super, super simple plugin, uh, but quite helpful uh, uh, if you want to um, kind of prevent users to become inactive or remind them of something to finish maybe the checkout, something like this. Um, really, really helpful. All right, let's jump to the next plugin, uh, which is Recapture. Um, that's a plugin by Bubble. Quite straightforward, not too much to say about it. I, I guess you all know what Recapture is, the typical I'm not a robot um, yeah, form by Google. Um, nothing too exciting, but I think a really helpful feature and I recommend almost all applications to add that to their sign up form um, or just general forms um, to prevent the yeah, spamming and, and mass sign ups and things like that. Um, it's really simple. You, all you have to do is go to Google's um, developer page, sign up for recapture. You'll get a site and a secret key. You just want to paste it inside. And then you can always use the uh, recapture element here. Um, and for example, let's say you have an input like a sign up page. Okay. Let's keep it simple like this, email and password, and then a button, sign up. And then all you have to do is, for example, okay, so you have the recapture form here maybe, like above the button, that's what I usually do. And then the sign up button here, sign up. And then what you can do, you can say, all right, the sign up button, conditional, define another condition, when recapture form isn't checked, so it's not uh, validated, well, then our button shouldn't be clickable, and the text should say, um, please complete recapture or something like this. Yeah. Um, and here in the recapture, you can just define some um, yeah, status, basically uh, parameters, uh, the theme, the, how big it should be and what kind of verification. Um, so again, really simple, but um, I would say quite helpful to prevent spamming bots um, and so on and so forth. Great. So let's jump into plugin number three, uh, which is Stripe. This is a plugin also made by Bubble, um, kind of deserves its own um, yeah, tutorial video, setup uh, video. Uh, we're not going to jump into details here, but obviously Stripe is a payments processor. 
allowing you to receive payments, um, create marketplace and do the payments for that and also have subscriptions. And the great thing is that uh, from this bubble plugin is extremely integrated into bubble itself. So you have access to all of these events and basically a Stripe user is added to, to the current user element, a uh, current user data type. So it's really tied in with bubble. And if you use Stripe, um, it's a super easy way to integrate and super fast. I mean, uh, it's probably the easiest way to uh, start collecting payments within your Bubble application. Again, there are um, other videos showcasing how to use Stripe. You have to fill in your secret key and publishable key. Um, I would always recommend to using Checkout V3. And then you have access to all of these things. You can charge a current user. And for example, let's say again, this is a payments page here. Um, and uh, I don't know just like a product, okay, and it has like a title, product, A, blah, 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 uh, four euros, okay. And then you can have a, a button here, and this button will say, purchase now, start at a workflow. You will have access to all of the actions under payments here, and you can do all of these things. For example, charge the current user. Super easy, the payer email will be the current user's email. You wanna charge them for five euros, choose the currency, give it a name, product, description, image, and that's basically it. And this this step here will bring the user to a Stripe checkout page. And if this is successful, if you the, the money has been charged and deducted, the workflow will continue. Otherwise, the workflow will break here. And yeah, and then you can do things like, okay, make changes to thing, and then say current user, add order. Um, and yeah, so basically really simple way, uh, highly recommended. And um, if, if you wanna accept payments in your Stripe, in your Bubble application. All right, so let's head to the last plugin, uh, which is Slidebar Menu, also um, a plugin by Bubble. Today we have lots of plugins by Bubble. Um, the Slidebar Menu is a great uh, UI feature um, for mobile applications and um, just basically your website on mobile apps uh, or uh, on smartphones. Okay, so what does it do? Usually, uh, let's see if we have a header here. No, we don't have that or it doesn't work. Or yeah, it works now. Let's remove the other header like this. Okay, so we have our header here. Okay, let's go into our header. Um, and usually, well, we have in a header, not always, but usually we have all these links. You probably know that we have like home here, like this maybe, and then we have pricing, and then we have, um, I don't know, team, about us, and all of these um, links, okay? Now, a problem is, obviously, all everyone has that problem, uh, and yeah, and login buttons, sign up buttons, and so on and so forth. If the page size decreases, yeah, you see this starts looking ugly on smartphones. Um, it's not aligned, there's no space, so it has to align underneath, uh, beneath each other, and this is just only three links. Imagine having more links, um, this will start getting quite ugly. So um, the solution for that, or one of the solutions is using a slide bar menu. So what is a slide bar menu? Let's add that, okay. A slide bar menu is um, here, an element. You simply drag that onto um, your header or somewhere else basically, okay. And you can basically replace these kind of links here, here in the options. So again, here we can have home, uh, pricing, about us and so on and so forth. And now you can also define all the um, yeah the icon color and so on and so forth. Where should the menu open? In this case on the right side because we position it on the right. Font color, font size and so on and so forth. And now if we preview this whole thing, okay, um, basically this nice mobile menu opens at the side, which you typically know. Obviously on a Big screen, this probably doesn't make sense, but if you decrease the size, this is a perfect UI for smartphones and smaller screens, okay? Now, obviously, you don't wanna have the slide bar menu and the normal header, so you would solve that uh, via responsive um, settings. Depends if you're on a new responsive engine or not. Uh, but for example, in the old responsive engine, I would say, all right, so maybe like this, I would say the slide bar where is it? Ah, we have to go to the header. I would say the menu here is hidden when the screen size is bigger than 285. 
and this is hidden like this, this as well. So we have these settings here basically to um, show and hide. You see, so if the screen gets smaller, this is shown, okay. Um, and if it gets bigger, we have the standard header again. So quite, quite straightforward. Um, so now if we, if we basically have a big screen, we have a standard header and on mobile uh, devices, we have our slide bar menu. And that's a great way to have a menu here at the side. So how would you uh, basically mm. configure um, the menu? You would say, all right, under workflow, you can say when a slide bar menus option is clicked of slide bar menu A, I want to maybe go to page index only when this slide bar menus current option is home. And what does it mean home? We defined here one of the options is home. So when home is pressed, this step should happen. You can just copy this and say, okay, um, go to page, I don't know, pricing, for example, if this current option is pricing. And so you can basically define the functionality in one single workflow. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, quite a short uh, tutorial, but um, these are all straightforward plugins, I would say, um, except Stripe, obviously, there's a lot you can do here, but um, I would recommend watching other videos for that. Um, but yeah, four super, super simple, but really helpful free plugins, uh, three made by Bubble, one made by us, um, that uh, I would highly recommend you to add to your applications um, if you have some kind of need for them. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you for watching. And I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial of NoCoHQ. Bye.